still ignored my rules. I lost 27,000, but mm -hmm. because I'm trading with such a small account, that was my worst loss in like the last five years. It's not good, but like mm -hmm. in the last like five years, I've made like nearly 3 million. Mm -hmm. So if you can make 3 million without losing even like, you know, 30,000 at all, that's yeah. a good strategy. That's really good risk of word as well. Why are you taking this so personally? It's business. I was like, it's not business. It's personal. Right. Like I dedicate my life to this. My mom and dad work for us too. So it's oh, like a family okay. business. You know what? Like people just don't want this. They want like Lambo money. So I was like, okay, let me put like a little 30 second video before the technical video. Yeah. And I was like, look at this new Lambo I just got. You want to learn to get a Lambo? Watch this video. And it worked. I don't trust you anymore. You shouldn't. After seeing <laughs> don't trust anybody in penny stocks. Oh, that, don't trust true. anybody in penny stocks. I didn't okay. even want the orange one. I wanted a black one. It sold out the day before. And I was like, all right, I'll get the orange one. So I was okay. like the orange douchebag, right? The big money isn't on any one play or any one pattern. Mm. It's can you stick around for multiple cycles? Yeah. You know, like now everybody who's learning right now, if they're studying and they're paying attention, they'll be ready for the next cycle. Mm. But I hope that, like you said, once every 10 years, I like that. Yeah. I end the webinars, like people are like, I want to stock pick now. And I'm uh, like, no, 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 no. I give live webinars. I'm like, what can you do now to be prepared for 2027? Do you remember this Lamborghini parody video I made? Here's the truth. I started trading because I saw an ad of some guy standing next to his orange Lambo, telling me how much money I can make from trading penny stocks. This is Tim Sykes, AKA the granddaddy of all penny stock and small cap traders, and the man who introduced me to trading many, many years ago. As a pioneer of online trading education, Tim has gained a huge popularity and mainstream media coverage over the last 20 years. Along with his success in trading and entrepreneurship comes highly polarized opinions about Tim. Some people see him as a douchebag, while some people see him as a man who's committed his life to charities, promoting education in third world countries, and environmental causes. Join me today for an exciting podcast with Tim Sykes. Make sure to hit the like button down below and share this video with your trading partners. All right, I'm here with a man who needs no introductions. Years ago, I think someone told me that they describe you as the granddaddy of all penny stock millionaires. And I'm here with you today. I cannot believe it. Welcome, Timothy Sykes. Hey, thanks for having me on. So I also want to say that I'm like, I'm just like, I'm like fangirling right now ah. because I got into trading like in 2013, 2014. I first learned about stock market because I saw you online. Nice. So I just have to say that this is a very, very special moment. Glad to help. That's yeah. good. Everyone should get involved. Like you see how it's changed your life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I do want to ask you, you've been trading for like 20, 30 years. 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. Okay. Older than some of my top students. Yeah, yes, yeah. so we can talk about that later as well. Some of your students are like the youngest millionaires yeah. I know. But what kind of trader are you now? And what's your focus now this year in 2023? Yeah, I mean, I still love penny stocks, but OTCs have like died. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm trading a lot of NASDAQs, a lot of short squeezes, um, just quick hits, trying to make 10, 20%. Um, I used to short sell a lot. Now I don't short sell. I think it's yeah, very risky. Yeah, I know this. Um, it's still profitable, but now I trade like specifically to teach. Like mm. I donate all my trading profits to charity. I'm trying to make like 500, 1,000 per day. Okay. Um, I'm like trading with a small account. So like this morning I made roughly 1,000 on three mm. trades. And like, you know, veteran traders are like, what is this? This is like nothing for you, right? Yeah. But I'm like, this is what I want to show people. Because it's mm. not just about the profits. It's the process. So yeah. I'm trying to trade still, and I will trade bigger if a good play happens, but I like to trade very meticulously and cowardly. Did you have a finance background before getting into trading? What no. was your major uh, I mean, I got started in high school before I even had a major. I was a tennis player. Oh, okay. Um, so I got started back in 99. Um, oh my God. I know, right? That's it's so long ago. Crazy. And uh, I was a tennis player. I got injured. I had two casts on my arms, but my parents gave me my bar mitzvah money, roughly 12 grand. Um, they thought oh. I would lose it all in the markets, okay. but I got obsessed with chart patterns. Back then it was Y2K plays were the hottest. Um, what did that stand for? Year 2K. Year, year 2000. Oh, oh, okay. Y2K. Oh my God. Okay, got it. 
They were hot. Oh uh, dot coms were yeah, hot yeah. too. My first strategy, my most successful strategy back then was buying a company when they changed their corporate name to, you know, whatever the comp company was and they added dot com. So like sportsman's uh, guide okay. became sportsmansguide.com and the stock would quadruple over like three or four days because mm. everyone's like, oh, internet company. Were those still penny stocks? Were they, were they, were they actually like, you know, $1, $2 stocks, not sub pennies? Different ones. I mean, everything like roughly below $5 a share is typically like what a penny stock is like mm. sportsman's guide i think it went from like three to like 13. um i bought e-digital they they basically invented the first mp3 player uh long before iphones or ipods or anything like e-digital came up with this and i bought it i think at like i want to say like two or three cents and i flipped mm. it at like seven cents and it went oh, to like a, okay it went to like a dollar like i totally underestimate a lot of the the spikes on these plays but that's fine i think that's a good way to trade and, and to teach you were in high school and in college. What, what, what made you decide to trade though? I know you have $12,000, but yeah. I think most college students would like throw that, you know, like partying, drinks, buying, you know, I don't know if $12,000 back then can buy you a car, but why trading stocks? Um, I mean, so understand I had two casts on my arm, yeah. so I couldn't do anything. Like I couldn't even drive, you know, it, it didn't matter. So for me, it was like, I was, injured yeah the market was going crazy this was like a crazy bubble mm. so i couldn't ignore it and you know when i see a pattern working like i was winning 90 95 percent of the time mm. so it wasn't like oh i want to be a trader i was like wait a minute this is like free money and uh, i was in the right place at the right time right. i didn't even know what i was doing i mean aside from the dot-com strategy i was inadvertently uh tailing boiler rooms we didn't even know that boiler rooms were pumping up penny stocks oh, back okay. then but i would buy an otc stock like a pink mm -hmm. sheet stock yeah. like at 3 30 or 3 45 in the afternoon any strong stock that's up 20 30 percent on the day whether they had news or not i'm just looking for the biggest percent gainers and it would gap up 10 20 30 percent the next day and i'm like looking around i was like am i the only one like seeing this i didn't know like a year later yeah. a year and a half later it came out that boiler rooms were calling people up at dinner time that's when they would get them on the phone so they would call oh, them at dinner time okay. pitch them the penny stock the idiots would buy it or be like sold overnight but because the markets are closed there's okay. no pre-market trading all the buy orders would stack up at the open the next day so you get the 10 20 30 percent gap ups i didn't know about the boiler rooms i just knew that strong stocks mm -hmm. otc stocks would gap up so I whether see. it was a dot com company or an OTC company, I'm literally winning almost every single time. So I was like, it's not like, oh, I want to be a trader. It's just like, what have I stepped into? I see. So you were getting near the end of the market close. Yeah. And then the people pumping the stock will kind of help you overnight. Well, not, not help you directly, but it benef you benefited from the overnight gap ups. On and the I penny had no stocks. idea. I thought that I was like oh. a genius. <laughs> like I'm in the dorm room, like freshman year in college. Yeah, I have like yeah. three other freshmen. I'm like, I'll bet you a hundred dollars each that I can make 10 grand the next morning. Oh and so God. I would like do it. And then I would just follow the pattern and I'd make like 12 grand and collect like $300 cash from these freshmen being like, what's going on? And I had, I had no idea. It's so yeah. funny when boiler rooms got exposed like in 2001, 2002. And I was like, it makes sense. Oh, so did the strategy stop working Completely. after then? So oh, year 2000, I, I made 700 grand the first four months as a okay. college freshman. The That's last crazy. eight months of the yeah. year, I lost 10 grand. I didn't know short selling back then. I so see. like the the otc gap up and the dot coms all died after the nasdaq crash in 2000 mm. but it forced me to adapt and i became a short seller i made basically my second million 2001 2002 2003 just shorting the pumps so How like did you... i made the first million basically buying it yeah. second shorting it i didn't even know about any of it so it seems like is everything self-taught like yeah. did you there were there were no like forums so now there's the forums thing. but so i mean this is part of the reason why i created profitly to show all your trades your mm -hmm. entries your exits your position sizes because back then there were forums like you had the lion uh you had shark tank on uh aol like oh, i mean this is okay. old school shark tank and like aol that sounds AOL very familiar and, like, CompuServe. i'm talking about okay. like dial-up modems like 56k oh, wow. modems so you were saying you never really had like a mentor figure. You just kind of figured out, out everything yourself in your dorm room. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, literally, I'm buying these stocks with a pattern that I don't mm -hmm. understand. I later shorted stocks after I understood like pump and dumps a little better. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to learn online, but at the time, you had like AOL Shark Tank, uh, you had the Lion, but like traders would only show like their entries, not their exits. Mm. And I was like, that's not a complete trade. Like, because they're helping on? to pump the stock up. They don't exactly. want you to know exactly. the exit. And I was like, wait yeah. a minute, like good, good play or bad play? I just want to know like the process. Mm. So no one was really teaching the process. And that's later what helped me, like, inspire me to become, like, a, a teacher because I never had a mentor, so I made so many boneheaded mistakes. Mm. I might have made my first million going long, second million basically going short, but I had a lot of losses in between. Yeah. Just, like, sizing in too much, not cutting losses, like, having no risk management. Mm. So I'm, like, literally completely self-taught, and that's held me back my entire career. Yeah, I like that. I like that you mentioned that you did also have some losses, just like most traders would. But did you ever blow up your accounts? Uh, so that wasn't until 2007, 2006. So I was running a hedge fund. I was okay. trying to grow my uh, strategy. I always like traded with a small account. Mm. You know, I had made like nearly two million before I graduated college. Yeah. Um, but then I had a small hedge fund. I was trying to get like friends and family, and I was trying to grow it. But back then, hedge fund rules prevented you from talking about your returns publicly. And I oh, have really? like a big mouth. And like, I couldn't talk about it publicly and I was just getting more and more frustrated. Okay. Um, I went on this TV show called Wall Street Warriors where I was drunk in every episode and oh became God. like a hit. And I couldn't talk about my performance, but you knew that I turned a few thousand into a few million. Hmm. Um, and I was trying to get my hedge fund bigger. I invested basically a third of it into this one company, Cygnus E-Transactions. Okay. This is the problem with having no mentor, no risk management, You no went rules. all in, almost. Not all in, but a third of your hedge fund, yeah. I had like a $3 million fund, put basically a million in, lost it all. Oh no, um, okay. So, Killed my hedge fund returns right as the TV show was like booming. It was all messed up. Like, and I couldn't uh. even talk about it publicly. I couldn't talk about my wins publicly. I couldn't talk about my losses publicly. But I basically fell in love with the technology I uh, see. and had a million dollar loss. So, yeah. That yeah. So, I think the way you would trade a hedge fund money would be different than how you would trade your own money, right? How did you manage it differently? And what are some of the the, the drastic difference in, the, in terms of difficulty. Yeah, so there was no difference for me because I was half my hedge fund. So the I only see. reason why I started the hedge fund was just to diversify and I had a lot of friends and family who wanted to like, you know, trade mm. and they couldn't do it themselves. They didn't have time, like it's very time consuming. Okay. So I was like, okay, let me just, you know, manage other people's money. Um, Okay. I was, it was just an extension of my own strategy. But again, the problem with me as a hedge fund manager is I was trying to grow it bigger. At mm. that point, I didn't understand the limitations of my strategy. I thought like I could run like a billion dollar fund. I didn't understand scalability. Yeah. Um, so I invested a third of it into this technology, which I thought mm. was huge. I was right about printed home ticketing. It became huge. Wrong about the company. Um, I see. But it really taught me from my wins and my losses, like what I knew, what I didn't know. Like I can always make like a thousand or two thousand dollars here or there on these little trades, whether it's dot com plays or pump and dump shorting mm. them, um, and now you know trading short squeezes. But I have problems scaling up because I never learned structure. So mm. all my wins, all my losses led me to becoming a teacher because I wanted other people to have like an easier time than me. Yeah, I think especially since you mainly focus on penny stocks, do you think the, well, that's part of the restriction that prevented you from scaling up. A lot of traders I know, once they, they can start with penny stocks, small caps, but eventually if they want to really grow like millions of dollars of yeah. account, they can no longer trade those small stocks. They have to go to large caps or, or trade options. I've tried other mm. strategies. I'm yeah. just not very good at it. And I think it's due to my own, you know, failings with a lack of like structure in my education. Um, mm. I was too successful, frankly, and that like hurt me because now I'm like, I want that success again. I, I want that 90 to 95 percent win rate. And you can't get a 90 to 95 percent win rate yeah. with more scalable strategies. Mm. You need to, you know, monitor your risk, you know, prune your position size, do all the things that I hate doing. Mm. So with penny stocks, it's like limited me. But I think that, you know, part of the reason why I still do it is because I love it. Mm. And I think that everyone should start with penny stocks, especially if you're like, you're a newbie trader. Yeah. If you want to, you know, blossom and go on to other strategies, that's fantastic. Um, I'm like, I kind of think of myself as like this vampire, you know, like, mm. did you ever see Interview with a Vampire? Yeah. Do you remember that? Kirsten Dunst is this child. She can never grow up. Yeah. And like, that's me. I'm like this child trader. I can never really grow up out of penny stocks. Mm. So I've accepted my fate. 
Okay. Um, and I, now I teach it. But yeah. like, I don't tell any of my students, like, you're going to become a billionaire. Like I say, like, you can make a few million like me and now, you know, 30 of my top students have, but there's limitations with penny stocks. So it's, mm -hmm. it's the gift and the curse. It's good that penny stocks, I think, are easier. They're a good place to yeah. learn, but you can't make tens of millions or hundreds of millions very easily. That's true. I think penny stocks is a good way for people to dip their toes in the stock market and whether they stick with it or they eventually transition to other asset classes or bigger stocks. I think people have different like preferences and they choose their own drug. If I may. hundred yeah. percent. And so like, I mean, I've been on CNBC a few times and they're mm -hmm. always like, Oh, you started with penny stocks. You're into other stuff now. And I'm like, Nope. Nope, just, just penny stocks. Yeah, you should so, stick with what you know. Well, yeah. I also, because penny stocks are such like a manipulated, like BS industry, you have all yeah. these Discord rooms with like fake bots and like there's so much misinformation. So now even mm. if I wanted to change industries, like I can't leave this niche because otherwise promoters would just like continue to rip off newbies like they always have. So I have to like kind of look out for my little niche. Now I've mm. like grown an affinity to it. So I don't know. It's It's been a strange quarter of a century journey for me, but mm, yeah. um, I love teaching and that's made this much more meaningful for me. Yeah. Um, you know, like you've been, how many years have you been trading now? Uh, eight years now. Right. Yeah. The adrenaline rush kind of wears off. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Like I still love like making a profit and like getting like a fast spike. Like this morning I was into play. I made like 25%. I was like, yeah, I felt the rush, mm -hmm. but I love it now. Like when other students have like those light bulb moments and that's mm -hmm. made it more meaningful. Yeah. Me. So you have to like kind of really be introspective uh, in your journey. It's not just about how much money you can make. I remember when I first joined, I think I was in like penny stock silver or whatever. Yeah. There were a couple of strategies. That's like your core strategies that you taught, like the pennant dip buy or the, what's it like first red day short or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You, I know you have a couple more. What are some of the strategies that you will still recommend newbies who trade today? Because obviously we talked about earlier, some strategies change, some work well in 2020 and 2021. Yeah. And this year things have changed. What do you think is a beginner friendly strategy that a lot of newbies should learn this year? Yeah. So, I mean, I love morning panic dip buys, but as okay. we were talking before, like there just haven't been that many morning panic dip buys. Yeah. The best morning panic dip buys are on plays that have been running for three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Then they drop 30, 40% in a few minutes, taking mm. out stop losses. Then ideally with the promotion, the promoters bounce it because they don't want an investigation or dip buyers come in and you get mm. like these 10, 20, 30% bounces in a few minutes. We're just not seeing that right now. Yeah. Uh, there've been a few this year, but not mm. very many. Um, shorting first red days, that was always my go-to strategy shorting. It still works, but I personally don't short because I trade like a newbie and I don't think newbies should be shorting oh, because a okay. lot of the shorts right now, the mm. squeezes are insane. Before, yeah. when I first started shorting, stocks would go two to six, three to nine, four to like 12, over like three or four days max. Yeah. Now you're getting like four to 20 three to 80, like five to a hundred. And yeah. you're just like, newbies can't control themselves. Mm. So now I think like a teacher, so I wouldn't short first red days. Even though they're I profitable, see. a lot of my top students have made a lot of money shorting the first red days, yeah. it still works. Newbies is difficult because you just can't control yourself. Um, so right now for newbies, I think mm. that you should actually be buying short squeezes. I always say thank you short sellers. Thank you to all the shorts who sacrifice mm. their time, their health, <laughs> their wealth, um, and they participate in these squeezes. Right, okay. All, it's partially my fault. This is what's crazy because I've been successful as a teacher and I have mm. so many millionaire students who do short sell. Yeah. Now there's a whole bunch of wannabe short sellers and there's a whole cottage industry. There's all these little brokers that mm. have borrows on these shorts and yeah. before there were never really that many borrows I had yeah. a music video called No Borrow No Cry Right? I remember watching right? that on YouTube. Okay, okay. I just released the 13th yeah. anniversary updated edition, okay. right? Um, but now there's a lot of short shares out there. Uh, there's a lot of short sellers and the squeezes are just crazy. So mm. as a newbie, you can sometimes <clears throat> buy these terrible companies, these terrible companies, but they spike the fastest. Like the mm -hmm. most fundamentally flawed companies can spike the most. And yeah. that's confusing for people because people are like, no, I want to buy a blue chip company. But mm. no, you can buy like the worst company in its squeezes because of too many shorts. I think it's very interesting because when I first found out about you, yeah. that's when you, I think you had some lessons on short selling. Yeah. But back then it was so hard to get access to these 
I think you you call it like a high net worth broker, or whatever. Yeah. You need a certain amount of capital to yeah. be able to short. Yeah. I didn't have that, so back then it was very difficult. And then when like things started opening back up for these like people with smaller accounts, I was able to short. Yeah. And they got so popular that nowadays this maybe a little bit more edge going long at least the first or the second green day and yeah. then you short it after yeah. that yeah it's it's crazy how patterns evolve like mm -hmm. even going back to my 99 and 2000 strategy buying the dot coms yeah or buying the otc pumps and selling the next morning at first i was buying at like 3 55 p.m 3 50 p.m selling the next morning 9 30 9 35 a.m yeah and like you know you could have more time then it had to get earlier and earlier. So by the end of the strategy, I was actually buying it at like 3 p.m., mm. not even holding overnight, selling at 3.45 p.m. because the, the pattern sped up. So you have to kind of understand okay. like if too many people partake in a strategy, it, it dissolves yeah. and it flips. And so mm -hmm. like, that's what's happening with short selling. Yeah. So like a lot of short sellers hate me right now. Cause I'm always tweeting at them. I'm like, right. thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> like, I know that you're going to the doctor a lot. Your stress right. levels are off the charts. Yeah. You're having like heart palpitations. Mm. It's scary to be a short seller. Even like some it of my is. top students, yeah. they make a lot of money, but like, you know, like HKD went yeah. crazy parabolic. Yeah. I had students and non-students who lost six, seven figures. on Kyle that. was here yesterday and he did talk about his, uh, really painful HKD loss. But he's, yeah. he's up nearly eight million or $5 million now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like, there's, it's good and bad. If yeah. you're an experienced short seller, you can usually outlast the squeeze yeah. or you at least have enough know-how to cut your losses. Yeah. Newbies keep averaging up. Uh, yeah. They think they can outlast it, but they can't. They mm -hmm. don't have the know-how, they don't have the experience. I think as a trader, whether you are more short bias or long bias and whether that changes or not, I think it's good to know both sides. 100%. Because you want to know, as a short, I want to know when the longs are selling and when the long setups are not working and I want to go the other side. And same thing, vice versa. I mean, I have 9,000 video lessons in my video lesson library. I've, I've been a little busy. Like <laughs> yes. the first third of them is pretty much all short selling. Okay. And people are like, no, I don't want to watch that. You don't do that. But I'm like, no, it's good to know First mm -hmm. of all, it's good to study the past. It's good yeah. to study history, but it's good to know, like thinking the other side too. But people don't want to do that. They just like, no, I don't want to study something from like three or five or seven years ago. God forbid it's 10 years ago. Mm. But the crazy thing is like the patterns don't change. That's why I bring yeah. up like 99 and 2000 with dot coms, very similar to 2020 when companies were getting into the crypto space and they would like change their corporate name to something crypto yeah. and the stock would triple. And then 2021, 2022 companies would get into AI and chat GPT, same yeah. exact pattern. So mm. it's like, no matter what the trend is, people are buying hype. And it usually mm -hmm. ends the same. It's not an exact science, but yeah. there's a very similar pattern. Woo! Yeah, sure NASDAQ down two and a half percent. Oh, Let's go! Right. So as we speak right now, you just checked your phone. The NASDAQ is down. Two and a half percent, Why, why are you rooting for it? You're not even short. <laughs> so I haven't shorted a stock in like a year and a half or something. Yeah. But I want more volatility, okay? The okay. bigger the market crash, the better the panic dip buys. We haven't been getting that many panic dip buys because we've been in such a bull market. Right? So like, it's, mm. it's weird. Trading is very counterintuitive. I just want a lot of volatility. Right? Yeah. So if the market panics, like, were you trading in 2008 during the crash? No. So like a lot of people haven't been there from 2008 or like, let alone 2000. If the market tanks, like forget the NASDAQ is down two and a half percent today. That's nice. Yeah. But I want like a 10% drop. If the NASDAQ <laughs> drops 10%, yeah. small caps will drop 50, 60, 70%. I see. And then I'll get my morning panic dip buys. Uh, I got nothing but cash okay. right now. I'm all liquid. I have zero positions. I see. Okay. And I'm also betting on people. Like I'm like, I still like my little like friendly wagers side bets. I'm like, I bet there's going to be a crash. I was tweeting like, come on black Monday, but then Bill Ackman screwed it up. <laughs> I'm like, today I tweeted, I was like, Ackman, shut your trap up. Let it crash. Right. Black Thursday, Black Friday. Let it begin. Okay. I just want volatility. And this mm. is what traders should be more into. They're, they're so obsessed with like their, their, you know, biases. They, they mm. want like a bull market. They want like a nice backdrop. I just want volatility. I want patterns to open up. Yeah. You know, that's, that's me. 
Yeah, I think especially in the bear market, the bounces are way bigger. Whether it's I trade mostly large cap now, but like probably for penny stock, like bounces are a lot more aggressive. As well. I need a giant crash to open hmm. up like some 50, 60 percent panics. A lot of people aren't prepared, just like short sellers aren't prepared for the upside during yeah. the squeezes. Longs aren't prepared for a crash. Hmm. There's so few traders who have seen a crash in person in real time in 2008 or 2000. It's yeah. so like there's no bottom. Everything's mm. just falling. And if you're long, like it's the scariest. It's like the worst feeling in the world. You're like, no, 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 no. This can't happen. No, 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 no. But it does. So in during that crash, were you did that affect your personal per portfolio? And like a trading account? No. I mean, I always no. just try to look for patterns. Like I'm very opportunistic. I don't have yeah. like long term holdings. Oh, you, um, you don't even like. Oh, you don't invest. I got nothing. I got money market funds. I'm earning like 5%. What? 5.4%. I don't invest. I don't believe in necessarily like long-term investing for people with small accounts. You have to understand, I but trade. You don't have a small account I, anymore. I trade with a small account. Okay. I understand. I'm so like, like you said, like, do I have people like working for me and helping me and stuff? I'm such like a micromanager. <laughs> if I have like a long-term position, I'm still going to look at it. Oh I can't God. just ignore it. Okay. Right. So like, I, I know who I am. I have my CDs. I have some CDs. I just got a CD the other day, like 5.4%. Let's oh, go. Oh right. Like I mentioned many times before on this channel, most profitable traders I know, they reinvest profits from trading into other longer term investments that will grow their wealth passively. This free tool is not only a portfolio management tool, but also a social platform that allows you to follow other traders, investors, and see their portfolio holdings. This tool is Blossom. Anyone can download Blossom for free and connect the app to your brokers safely. They do not share personal data. For example, you may have different holdings in Robinhood, Vanguard, or Webull. Well, you can now securely connect them all under one portfolio analytics platform. There's also a social feed for you to connect with other traders or investors who are following the same stocks. And you can even see their returns and what kind of trades they've made in the past. For example, on my profile, you can see all my investment holdings, how much I'm up or down on the year, as well as my recent buys or sells, all in percentages. So make sure to check out Blossom. It's free to use down below. I'm an angel investor in Blossom, so I would love to hear your feedback down below. I, I just okay. know myself. So I'm mm. looking for maximum volatility yeah. because then I do have a lot of cash that I could put into the trades mm. and put into the market if something presents itself. Like Google's down 10% today. That's a big move for Google. Yeah. Right? But what if Google was down 30% on the day? If Google's down 30% on the day, small caps could be down 90%. And then you right. get like a crazy like garage sale. Uh, People just aren't prepared for that. Like, yeah. I'm not rooting for like the end of America or like, you know, massive like panic. Mm -hmm. I just want volatility. I want yeah. trading opportunities. People forget everyone's scared of 1987. But like after that crash in 1987, we went straight up for like 14 years. Hmm. So sometimes you need that little crash to wipe out all the weak hands and to I create see. opportunity. People don't sense. want that. People don't want pain at all. But mm -hmm. I think that like, even as a trader, like we we're talking about my million dollar loss with Cygnus E transactions that yeah. sucked because I didn't have risk management, I didn't have the rules in place, but that loss crystallized everything for me. That loss helped me learn what I didn't know, yeah. and now I teach those rules, because I never want anybody else to like experience that. I see, was that $1 million your biggest loss ever? Yeah, times, okay. like I never had even like over a $200,000 loss. I, I just went big, I believed in it, yeah. and I didn't have risk management. I see. So now I'm never in that position, ever. Mm. I'll never have, I mean, my biggest loss in the past few years was just a few months ago, and I still ignored my rules. I lost 27,000, but mm. because I'm trading with such a small account, that was my worst loss in like the last five years, Yeah, 27,000, which is, it's not good, but like mm -hmm. in the last like five years, I've made like nearly 3 million. Mm -hmm. So if you can make 3 million without losing even like, you know, 30,000 at all, that's yeah. a good strategy. That's really good risk award as well. But sometimes it's a slippery slope. Like mm -hmm. that $27,000 loss should never have happened. Sure. So okay. I still like you, you can still slip up, mm -hmm. um, but there's different orders of magnitude of how much you can slip up. Right. You know, I've never had a million dollar win. My biggest win is like 200,000. Do like you I, remember which stock? Uh, this was during the Asian tsunami, uh, Taylor devices, T-A-Y-D. 
So okay. I was a short seller back then. They make earthquake absorption equipment to like make buildings like steadier so that I they see. don't completely topple over. There was the Asian tsunami of 2004. Everyone was like, oh my God, Taylor devices, they're going to get all these contracts. Everyone's going to want to use mm. their equipment and their buildings. Unfortunately, the company was near bankrupt, even though it's a nice sounding idea. Yeah. Uh, it went from like one to eight. I was actually shorting it too early in the sixes. Oh, you um, got squeezed to eight. So I got squeezed. So I lost two, I lost 180,000. Oh God. Okay. And then I got back on the horse and reshorted and then I made 220,000. It's like the worst way to make 40,000. That was like, that was <laughs> yes. me as a short seller back uh, then. Oh, okay. Um, but my best trade of all, like freshman year of college, yeah. no losses. I was long this company, Illinois Superconductor, ISCO. Okay. Um, back in the year 2000, you had cell phones, which were very fuzzy. Like if you tried to like, like call mm. people there, were, first of all, it wasn't even like a cell phone. It was like, it was like a giant box and you had like a wire, like it was like ghetto, right? Okay. You don't remember this. I don't in, remember this. In 2000, <laughs> but like cell phones were just becoming a thing, but the reception was so bad. Illinois Superconductor, um, the superconductive technology has always been like this promise where they can make technology better by like freezing wires and it's very scientific. Freezing wire, okay. Yeah, yeah. freezing okay. like superconductivity, it can make like electronics more efficient. Hmm. That was the promise. And back in the year 2000, there were no short seller exposés. The market was going crazy. Yeah. Um, ISCO came out with a press release on a Friday saying, hey, we've been interviewed. Uh, we're going to be on TV on Sunday. Hmm. And at the time, I didn't know short selling. Everything was going up. People believed in these miracle technologies. The stock had already gone from 5 to 17 that week. But at the time, I didn't know risk management. I didn't have any rules. I yeah. was just riding these things higher. Okay. I was like, oh, they already filmed this interview, so it's probably going to be positive. So let me buy this stock. So I bought 10,000 shares at roughly 17, which was like three quarters of my net worth at the time. Yeah. Stupid, terrible risk management. You were young back then. The yeah, interview yeah. was positive. The stock gapped up. There's no pre-market trading back then. The stock mm -hmm. gapped up to 29. I sold. I locked in roughly 120 grand on my 170 grand. Oh my God. And I was so scared. I'm like trying to sell it. Yeah. E-Trade wasn't like selling. I was like, come on. <laughs> I didn't even have to rush it. The next day it hit the 40s. So the momentum That's kept crazy. going. But that okay. was like one of my first weekend strategies. So like the weekend mm. strategy is something that has worked very well for me. Buying a stock with news on Friday yeah. that can keep going into Monday because newbies hear about it over the weekend. Mm. That pattern has been working for 20 plus years. Yeah. More times than not. I think I used to trade that strategy a lot, like swinging overnight. But I think last year was a little bit unpredictable for like the, a lot of the overnight swings where a lot of the times they'll gap down the next morning. Well, 2022, I mean, the average trading account lost like 40%. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, things change. Back yeah. in the year 2000, you could buy anything. Like even in 2020 and 2021, you could buy anything. Mm. Like I looked down on my fingers in 2020 and 2021, and I was like, I don't have enough fingers to do all the trades I want to do. <laughs> I was at Kyle Williams' house, right? Okay. We were celebrating him just crossing a million dollars. So like I brought like three other students. Kyle Williams is a vegetarian. Did he talk about this? No, did he did not. on this? Oh, okay. He's a vegetarian. So me and like two, three other students, we dressed up as vegetables. We like- <laughs> I was like a giant mushroom. I'll send you a picture. Okay. Insert picture okay. here. Timothy Sykes. Insert this a picture. Mushroom. I was a mushroom, but it looks like, like I look like a penis. Like it's a mushroom. It's a, it's a freaking mushroom. Oh okay. Um, and like, I think Matt Monaco, uh, he dressed up as like, I think a stalk of corn. Bryce, another one of my millionaire students was like a giant pea pod. And we like oh were in God. Kyle's house and we surprised him. When we bought like all these vegetables for him, we spent like That's five hundred dollars so at Whole Foods, and I just bought all the vegetables for him. That's <laughs> oh how we God. celebrated him crossing a million. But we we're in San Diego mm. celebrating him, and I it was like in the crazy mania, okay. and like I didn't, I could not make enough trades. I was like trading all the time, mm. like my fingers were hurting from so many trades. So I do want to talk about that. It seems like you have a really close relationship with a, a lot of these young millionaire students. Yeah, yeah tell, tell me about that. This like a group of like five different guys and you feature your students a lot. So what is it like? Well, so now it's 30 millionaire students. Okay. I'm trying to keep up. 30, I, okay. I still have to visit some new ones. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not just a business for me. This is personal. Like people are mm. like, why are you taking this so personally? It's business. I was like, it's not business. It's personal. Right. Like I dedicate my life to this. My mom and dad work for us too. So it's oh, like a okay. family business. Um, it's amazing to see what trading can do for people. Like, mm. especially when you do the seemingly impossible. Like, I don't know if you see this shirt. Do you know who these people are? Fairleigh Dickinson? Do you know this? Do no. you follow college is that basketball? Like a, is that like a, I was going to say football. You seem like a big college basketball Yeah, player. I definitely am. Right? Definitely. Huge. <laughs> um, Fairleigh Dickinson. Do you guys know who Fairleigh Dickinson is? 
Do you know what they did? So they were the second team, second 16 seed <laughs> to take down a number one seed. Okay. Which is, it's only happened twice before in the whole history of the NCAA tournament. So they've done the seemingly impossible. I'm obsessed with like the long shots, uh, right? Okay. UMBC, it was actually the first in 2018. I have their shirt too. And I love it like when, you know, someone starts with a thousand, two thousand, five thousand mm. dollars and becomes a millionaire in a few years. And mm. it's like, how is this possible? This yeah. statistically is impossible. But this is the beauty of a good strategy. This is the yeah. beauty of trading. This is the beauty of scaling up. Mm. So a lot of these students who become millionaires, like Jack Kellogg, yeah. now over 12 million, he was watching my YouTube videos while he was a valet. He was parking cars. Yeah. You need to interview him. It's I, crazy. I met him last year. I do need to interview him. I mean, parking cars as a valet, watching videos yeah. in between parking cars, saving up. He joined my challenge. But after year one, he was down like $5,000. Mm -hmm. And he paid several thousand for the course. So he's down like 10 grand yeah. after year one. But he's trading, learning, keeping track of everything. Mm -hmm. And he optimizes. And then he scales up. And now he's over 12 million. I, I do notice like a pattern, like all these millionaire students, they tend to be really young. Like, I think everyone that I've met, the students of yours, uh, millionaires, they're all like in their early 20s or mid 20s. Do you think, do you think there's a reason why they're all so young and they made it? Why, why isn't somebody else who's like say in their 40s or 50s getting into penny stocks? Why don't I see some similar success? So we do have some older millionaires. They mm. don't want to be public about it. So I like see. Either okay. Either wives or ex-wives or, you know, I have this one older millionaire. He doesn't, he owns a, a business. He doesn't want his employees to know that he trades, but he's oh, made I over see. a million. He's actually made over 3 million. Okay. I was like, come on, like you're the older millionaire. And he's like, nope, I have to keep it private because uh -huh. if his employees knew that he traded, they would trade and then they wouldn't be as good employees. I see. So that makes older sense. people usually have a reason not to be public about it. Young mm. people are just like, yo, this is amazing. Yeah. Also, young people don't understand what money buys. So like, I think this actually really helps like mm. where you don't know what you don't know. So like you can focus on your process. You can try to scale up. It's all a video game to you. It's not real. Okay. When you're older, like it's really tough to try to go for the jugular, to go for like these home runs, try to make 50 grand, a hundred grand on a trade mm -hmm. because you know what like $10,000 will buy in the real world. So okay. you want to take those profits. And then in your head, you're like, whoa, just paid my mortgage for the next like three months. I see. Versus okay. if you're young, you have no idea what $10,000 is or $100,000. Like this is what's fascinating for me hmm. when I first made my first few million. Like I was a philosophy major because I needed therapy. You philosophy major? I was major? a philosophy major what? because I needed therapy to deal with my millions. I was a terrible new millionaire. I okay. was like spending money like crazy. Yeah. Like I didn't know what to do or what not to do because I had no mentor. So now mm. when I have a millionaire, it's not just business for me. I take it personally because I see and I know what it's like to be a new millionaire and have no one guiding you. Mm. Like it's, okay. it sounds awesome to be a new millionaire, but like it's actually very confusing. It's like screwing up your brain because you're like, wait a minute, I just made an annual salary in like a few minutes or a few yeah. hours. I think that... Oops. One of my phones. I think I that is phones. like an interesting... Three phones. Let's put all the phones yeah. on the table. Why do you have three phones? Actually, Never trust anyone who has more than one phone. I actually <laughs> have five phones. So that means distrust me five times oh, over. Oh, you, you have like five different stocks on your screen you're trying to buy so or sell? This, well, no. So I have so much content. So that's my Asia oh my phone. God. That's my Europe phone. That's my WhatsApp phone. And I have two phones in the backpack. I got the new iPhone. Um, really excited about that. I haven't even tested it out yet. I don't trust you anymore. You should Don't trust anybody in penny stocks. Oh, that, don't that's trust true. anybody in penny stocks. Whether they are long bias or short bias. Don't trust anybody in trading. You have to remember, like, let's talk about the elephant in the room. 90% of traders lose. That's Most true. people who teach are just yeah. snake oil salesmen. There's the, oh, I'll teach you to be rich. Just right. follow my strategy. And you're like, wait a minute. But like, they don't show all their trades. They don't have actual millionaires. Like, mm. that's why for me, I'm so proud of being real. That's why it's personal to me. Yeah. I, I get sad emails from people who like join prop firms or services where like, I'll teach you to be rich. Mm. And it's all BS. Yeah. And I get it. Like when I first got started teaching, everyone's like, you're leaving hedge funds to get into like teaching. Like, oh, your hedge fund blew up. Actually, my hedge fund finished up 2% per year over four years. It still sucked. Okay. I wasn't a good hedge fund manager, mm. but I didn't blow up. I didn't need I to get out, but I saw more opportunity from teaching and I'm glad I did. Oh yeah. So tell, let's talk about that yeah. because I think the trading education space, 
this it's, it's it can be quite controversial there's two different sides that's to positive. it that's yeah. a positive spin on it it's terrible yeah. it's an industry of scams well but also at the same time without a lot of these scams there wouldn't be money in terms of like stocks to be made at the same time and that's I, I a lot of times you need that to to attract people to join trading i mean i i i'll just be honest i i joined trading because i saw your lamborghini ads 100 percent, right well that's not in my opinion that's not really a realistic depiction of what being a trader is like it got me into it whatever it takes yeah. to get people into it so that's another you're talking about many controversial topics right yeah now. yeah like, yeah i actually had two lambos first lambo i loved that was my childhood dream growing up in small town connecticut i was like I got this. The baby blue, blue one no, or the orange I had an one? Orange one. I didn't okay. even want the orange one. I wanted a black one. It sold out the day before. And I was like, all right, I'll get the orange one. So I was okay. like the orange douchebag, right? Like, I didn't want to be the douchebag. I feel just, like the black one would be a douchebaggy car, too. I, I feel like black Lamborghini is like Batman. Like, I feel like, uh, like cooler. Okay. But orange, orange. I was, I mean, Business Week featured me and I was like, mm. was, I think it was called like douchebag marketing. It was the first time they used douchebag like in a title. Okay. For me. Who's the douchebag? This guy. But again, it got you into trading. Yeah, that's so I true. recognize like what gets people into trading. Yeah. You know, I, I bring it up like when I first got into teaching, right? Like let's talk about going from hedge funds to teaching. Hmm. I got out of hedge funds only because my TV show, Wall Street Warrior was blowing up. I was getting all these emails. Yeah. I could have easily kept trading, but I had lost like 30%. I had lost all my industry credibility because of that one stock. Hmm. And I was like, screw this. There's more opportunity in teaching because there's so many scams. Because like I said, that loss helped crystallize the rules. I knew I needed to like help people yeah. learn this stuff because I didn't have the proper mentor mm -hmm. um but how do you get people to actually study so early on in my trading and teaching career okay. i would still trade i went back to my twelve thousand dollar roots there was a website called covester do you remember that website no so does it still exist now uh i think they got bought out by interactive brokers oh, they, don't, okay. they didn't they didn't do what they do now like they're a totally different company mm. back then they would you could tap in uh to your brokerage account and verify your gains Okay. I became the number one ranked trader out of 60,000 on Covester. I turned the 12,000 into like 250,000 in like my first four years mm. as a teacher, showing every trade, blogging about every trade, yeah. but people still weren't studying. Like I didn't have any millionaires my first, what, five years teaching. And mm. I was like, how do I get people to actually freaking study? Yeah. So the, the Lamborghini, everyone thinks like, oh, I became a teacher and got the Lambo. I didn't get the Lambo for like four years into teaching. I see. Because I was focused on trading and like making good technical videos. People just didn't care. Hmm. So then I was like, how do I get people to actually care? Yeah. And then I had like had enough money in teaching and trading. So I was like, let me give the Lamborghini a shot for myself because that's my childhood dream. And I then see. I was crazy to me. I tried something. This was the first test as a teacher. Um, I made like a 45 minute expose on some pump and dump. And I was like, here's why I'm shorting it. It's a cra It's a scam. It's going to crash. Yeah. I made this video. I stayed up all night making this. I'm like, I love this. The next day, like three comments, like good job, Tim. On and YouTube? Was, yeah. And I was okay. just like, I stayed up. I pulled an all nighter and like <laughs> no one cared. And mm -hmm. then I was like, you know what? Like people just don't want this. They want like Lambo money. So I was like, okay, let me put like a little 30 second video before the technical video. Yeah. And I was like, look at this new Lambo I just got. You want to learn to get a Lambo? Watch this video. And it worked. And how many views? Like, it went from, I think I had like 336 views on mm -hmm. it. And then the second AB test version had like 4,000. Oh, and like, wow. But it, out of the 4,000 views, it had like, I want to say like, maybe like 600 likes as mm. opposed to like 38 or 40 likes. Okay. Same exact video, just with the Lambo in the yeah. beginning. And I was like, okay, it's the carrot. It's literally an orange mm. carrot to get people to study. I see. And then I kept going and I had two Lambos and I had a Rolls Royce and a Ferrari and a Tesla and all this stuff. Why do you think like supercar, Lamborghini money, marketing works so well? Because it's just, it just shows you have an excessive amount of money mm. where people are so worried about like just getting by. Yeah. If you have enough money to blow like 150, 250,000 on a car, like you're doing well. That's true. But do you think 
sometimes that doesn't depict the the whole picture with trading. Like, so yeah, you need to be able to back it up. The mm. problem is now there's a lot of people with Lambos and like all yeah. this stuff. Like I also took out a million dollars in cash. I took it to the next level, right? Like yeah. I was like the master douchebag, but I can back <laughs> it up with my trading, yeah. with my teaching, with my students. Mm. A lot of people just forget to back it up or they I don't see. forget they can't back it up. Yeah. So I, I think it's good to recognize what motivates people, but you also need to have like the, the meat, right? Like mm. the Lambo just got you in, yeah. but you need to be able to have more than that. So I mm. recognize what it's for. And I'll yeah. tell you, my second Lambo was one of the scariest moments of my life. First Lambo, I was like, yo, this is awesome. Second Lambo, even better, more expensive, baby blue. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, I, I remember that one. I felt nothing. And I was like, what's okay. wrong with me? I thought I did a cancer test. I thought I had cancer. Oh. I, was like, I feel nothing, but I just, I was over the cars. Yeah. Once you achieve your childhood dreams, like all the mm. nice things just don't matter as much. So what happened to those lem two Lamborghinis? I sold, all of them. I sold, you sold them. Sold the okay. Lambo, sold the Ferrari, sold the Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce actually did best on social media and I hated it the most. It looks, it's I like never liked the Hearst. way it looks. It's like yeah. a hearse driving it to like the funeral. Yeah. It was my funeral. Oh, it's God. like so big. There's like an umbrella holder. Mm. Everyone's like, oh, that's so classy. I'm like... <laughs> It's so big, like I can't even turn properly. I can't park. Like screw that. I think Rolls Royce is like an old money image. Lamborghinis, uh, the, the the McLarens is like new money. The McLaren was yeah. my favorite to drive. It was like driving like an iPhone. You had like, a McLaren yeah, too. I had a gold. Oh my gold god! McLaren. I had it all. Get out of here! I had five cars. <laughs> I sold them all. And okay. It was so much better. But like I tried everything. The Ferrari yeah. was really nice. Ferrari for best all around performance. Okay. Um, you know, I had a four, five, eight, and then they came out with the four, eight, eight, and now they keep going with new stuff, but the Ferrari was amazing. The Lam first Lambo was amazing. Second Lambo sucked. Rolls Royce sucked. Good for social media. Mm. Um, you know, McLaren fun to drive. That's my, my supercar take. Yeah. I've only, I've been in a Lamborghini once Yeah. and it was this exact color, neon green. So yeah. I actually made a video. I think like 2020, April, April Fool's parody. Yeah. I rented a Lamborghini. Nice. Um, I think it cost me like $4,000 yeah. to rent it for one day. Yeah. And basically I was making a parody about yeah. the, the, that, 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 you know, that image of traders in Lamborghinis. That I started. That you started, <laughs> yes. Thank you for recognizing that. But, but I was trying to sell a product in like for fun, for yeah. a parody. I was like, oh, if you, if you, you know, I was selling a service for, if you pay me $2,000, I will trade for you. I'll give you the secret strategy that, that will always work and 100%. It did well, didn't it? Well, it was, it was parody. I Keep understand, but people were interested. People they actually didn't know it was emailed me oh, asking for it. So that's, I'm just, so you have ridiculous. to recognize what, yeah. you have to recognize what motivates people. Like it's not yeah. bad to want nice things. Like then it's like, Lambos get like vilified, like, oh, you yeah. shouldn't want this, but like, it's human nature. So what if you want a nice car? Mm. But for me now, cars are meaningless. I got rid of all of them. Yeah. Now I donate all my trading profits to charity, 116 schools built, infinitely more rewarding. Hmm. So you have to find what motivates you. Yeah. I post all my charity stuff. It really doesn't motivate people. People are like, I want to post the cars more, post the cash. Mm. I just do what I feel. I still have all the content. Like you can still see, type in Tim Sykes Lamborghini. You can see yeah, all my yeah, cars. Sure. I made an imprint on the internet. <laughs> yes. But you got to judge what motivates you. Mm. And anything that works, any kind of visual motivation mm. is good, I think. Okay, I'm sure I'm not the only person who got introduced to trading penny stocks because of Tim Sykes. Make sure to comment down below if his orange Lamborghini was also the reason you got into trading. Be honest. So in your opinion, because obviously we just talked about the, that image it gives you, you kind of painted that image for yourself maybe like 10 years ago. Yeah. Do you think there's that changes the way people treat you even nowadays? 100%. People yeah. don't realize I have no cars. They're mm. like, oh, just, you know, what are you doing? Go to your car. I was yeah. like, I got rid of all my cars. Like it's, if you're ever too successful with one strategy, like mm. that's going to be your role. Like Wall Street Warriors, people yeah. still remember me of that. I was on this other TV show, Below Deck. I was on this yacht. I was trading from the yacht. <laughs> There was no Wi-Fi. Yeah. I actually made 70 grand on the yacht. It was actually- well, How did you trade with no Wi-Fi? So there was satellite, but it was like, okay. I had to call in the order. I had three cameras in my face. Oh. Literally, I made 70 grand, EKSO. It was okay. beautiful. And I was so pumped. I was like, you got it all on camera, but 
on a reality show, you don't have any control of the edit. And True. they're like, that was an amazing thing. We're going to show it. So when Below Deck aired, mm -hmm. this was like six months later, I had a big party. And I was like, yo, they're going to show my 70 uh, grand trade. Okay. This is going to be amazing. You don't see the 70 grand trade. You just see me complaining about the lack of internet. I see. And then I'm like slamming doors. And then you see me walking around the ship like all excited because I had made 70 uh -huh. grand. So I thought that they would show it. But they didn't right. show that. And you just see me walking around the ship, like complaining about the lack of internet. And then I'm like, I think I'm the man. I came off terrible. So you just looked like a douchebag Compl walking I around just, the... I, oh, okay. I embraced the douchebag marketing, Ooh, okay? Okay. But I did fortunately make everyone, all my students wear this shirt that said timothysykes.com. Yeah. So I'm like the most hated guest on mm. like eight, uh, eight seasons of Below Deck and it's a big hit on Bravo. Yeah. But everyone sees me and they see the timothysykes.com logo. So douchebag marketing works okay but you have to accept the consequences i actually yeah. went on a second time um didn't even make a trade mm -hmm. left the biggest tip in show history they never air that episode because it's too positive uh, it's the douchebag they, they won that People image like the negative they like you know it's like staring at a car wreck mm -hmm. right like if you're on the highway yeah. and traffic is slow not necessarily because the car is blocking traffic mm -hmm. but because everyone's looking at the car wreck it's just human nature i see so if you could nowadays to kind of change your image, would you do that? Or you don't mind the way it is? I mean, I've done so much to make my image this way already. Like right. I didn't choose the negative below deck episode to be mm -hmm. like the biggest hit. Yeah. I would choose the positive one, but people just don't care. I see. Uh, the orange Lamborghini was literally like 15 years ago. People still bring it up. Yeah. So like <laughs> I try, I'm doing the charity stuff, not for my image. because yeah. That's what motivates me now. Maybe you should try driving a Corolla. I mean, that might work. I try. I don't. I, I'm carless. I travel all the time. Yeah. I don't. I just Uber. I know? was uh, asking my team yesterday if, yo, you think Tim Sykes now roll up in a Lamborghini on my driveway? I was hoping you would, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> Should I get Uber X? They were, I mean, even when I was thinking about like, maybe I didn't get the right Lambo, the Aventador had just come out. So I did a test drive of the Aventador. Yeah. Have you ever driven the Aventador? I, uh, honestly, I don't new. even know what Lamborghini I dro drove. The, there's like three new ones since then. But Aventador, okay. the back window was like this big. And I'm like trying to look out the back window. I'm like, if I get this, I'm going to die. Like, <laughs> it's just not well designed. Right. So I think it's good to chase your dreams and your childhood mm -hmm. dreams. But then yeah. you got to always look for new dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, when I open a new school, it motivates me. My social media engagement is like down like 90% because mm. people don't care about schools. Like even my tweet, like showing a new school got like Twitter applied, like a, a sensitivity warning. I was like, we're opening a new school for kids. How is this sensitive content? Oh, okay. I don't know. But now I just do what I want because now I don't, the good thing about like having built a brand for mm. 20 years now, yeah. um, I, I'm not looking for like new, you know, users or new followers mm. all the time. Now it's just like, this is what I'm doing. Take it or leave it. I see. Okay. So is that kind of your focus nowadays on your multiple char charities? Is that yeah. where you, cause obviously you don't spend money on cars anymore. Yeah. Where do you spend your money? All charity. So, you know, as we were talking about, so like we've done two documentaries we're producing the third documentary. Um, I self-finance the documentaries mm. and if you donate to the charity, none of that goes to me or like, it's not like a scam of a charity. It's a real charity. Mm -hmm. All the donations go to the actual causes, yeah. but I spend my own money on documentaries and travel and all that. Um, we have one and a half million followers on social media. It's called Karmagawa. Mm -hmm. Um, really love the community and I love building it up. You know, yeah. I saw you had Lance on Lance and I were just in England together and he has a charity and we've got a charity. So we might do something together too. He's oh, a great guy. Yeah. yeah. So charities is what keeps you busy. And you mentioned the documentaries. Can you tell us about the, what documentaries you've done and yeah. what are you working on? So it keeps me busy and it keeps me motivated. Like yeah. you've got to find what motivates you. The cars did motivate me. Now it's like, okay, we did, uh, the first documentary was on rhino poaching in South Africa. Um, if you can include the links, I'd appreciate yeah. it because they're on YouTube. Okay, um, great. It's the war against poaching, which is a really sad thing. Like they're chopping off rhino yeah. horns. I don't know if you know about this. Yeah, I know about and this. Rhinos are endangered. They yeah. never were even endangered a few years ago. The Specifically the white rhinos. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. But they chop off their horns yeah. because of these myths. I hate misinformation, whether it's misinformation for penny stocks mm. or misinformation medically speaking. People... Right like grind up these horns into liquids and they drink them. Yeah. They think it cures cancer. They think it, it's like an aphrodisiac. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Do you know what rhino horn is made out of? There's one ingredient. Guess. Oh, actually don't. Uh, is it just calcium? 
keratin. It's what's Ker in our fingernails and oh, hair. Okay. Zero medicinal properties. Right. And they're killing these beautiful animals because oh. they think that their horn has some magic in it. I see. Just due to myths, yeah. which is BS. Second documentary was on saving coral reefs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, like everyone knows we have to save the trees, yeah. the ozone layer and the atmosphere, mm -hmm. but like we don't realize that actually coral reefs, which are underwater trees, mm -hmm. actually are better for the environment and yeah. we're killing all the coral reefs. Yeah. Do you know about that? I know about that because I went to Thailand a couple months ago and we went on like a scuba diving was trip everything dead? to see corals. Yeah. But I saw some corals, but ironically, these big ships that obviously emit a lot of pollution yeah. and like oil in the water, they park right above the corals. So I was just like, you guys are killing your own light livelihood. In, exactly. You're yeah. shooting yourself in the foot. Same thing with Africa, where like people pay a lot of money for like safaris. Mm. And if the animals are all dying, there's yeah. not going to be any safaris. But the poachers don't care. They're just trying to get paid. They're not thinking about like long term effects. Mm. No one really thinks about the long term. This is the problem. Right. Like even in trading, you want fast money. This is why like Lambo money is good because it's like fast. <laughs> like, yes. you know, crypto, yeah. like let's make fast money. Yeah. You need to think about trading and life and really this whole planet. Like what can you do today, this month, this year mm -hmm. to really be better prepared five, 10 years down from the road? And if you think like that, it's amazing the difference. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, so like with coral reefs, it's not just the ships, it's actually suntan lotion. There's two chemicals in our suntan lotion. Mm -hmm. In the documentary, we have this scientist, really sad. Um, he gives a stat that if you have one drop of the chemical on, the, you know, on your skin and you go into the water and one drop of this bad chemical in a body of water the size of an Olympic sized swimming pool okay. kills all the coral reefs. Oh my God. So one drop versus yeah. picture of 500 people swimming with chemicals coral oh. reefs have no chance yeah not to mention the ships not to mention golf courses golf mm -hmm. courses are actually terrible golf you, course so like, like golf courses golfing. are all green yeah and the the grass is very low cut all with chemicals when it rains all I those see. chemicals go into the water oh wow killing coral. so like we're killing the coral reefs in so many different ways so those were our first two documentaries mm -hmm. very eye-opening but it's really tough to change anything. At least these chemicals are being banned mm. more. And now rhino, the rhino population is actually up a little bit year over year. Okay. So there, there can be changes. This third documentary is in Bali mm -hmm. where we have 52 schools, 13 homes, two recycling centers, and now helping a charity that helps kids who have been trafficked. Mm. So it's really talking about poverty and the consequences of a lack of education. And it's really, it's intense. So it's taken the past two years. And you're and producing? Producing, all starring all in, directing, uh, narrating, editing. Okay. Um, it's my passion project. Mm. And that's what gets me up every morning. Like I yeah. have more than enough money. I don't need to trade. I don't need to teach. Mm. I don't need to travel. But like, you know, you got one life. You got yeah. to do what you love. I think it's, it's really inspiring that your mission like it, it, at first it's just to teach and now that you made money from that and from trading, now you're putting that into charities to have even bigger impact That's outside of trading. hundred yeah. percent. And the more that you can impact people in the world, the better. Like mm. people complain about social media, like, oh, it's so superficial. But superficial is just how people are. Like mm -hmm. people take it, right? Like who yeah. do we, who's the number one person on social media? Who do you think of? Who's the king or queen of social media? Maybe Ty Lopez. He used to be years uh, ago. Is it Donald Trump? Those two He's got his own is. social media. Okay. I was going to go with Kim Kardashian. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that all too. The, all the yeah. Kardashians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't donate to anything. Hmm. They're totally changing their face. Like all the men in their family are messed yeah. up. Like it's not exactly a good role model. Right. And this is what millions of girls want to be. Like, hmm. you know, they're the richest. They marry all the like most famous people in the world. Yeah. We need to change those priorities. So what mm. if charity does take over? What if knowledge, what if studying takes over? And people are like, wow, wait a minute. Education and giving back and helping each other can take over. Mm. We've had a few viral hits. Like I do all the social media for my charity too. And I like see what people like. And it's people want guidance. They want to make the world better. They yeah. just need like pushing. Mm. So I'm there to push. Do you, do you think charity or trading or or you know, teaching students, helping students, which one of these take up the most of your time now? I mean, it's all, every day I trade and teach, so mm. that's still my priority, but then when the market's closed, it's yeah. charity. Mm. Um, but it's all connected for me, right? Yeah. So like it's all giving back to others, whether I'm giving lessons, whether I'm giving money, mm. whether I'm you know, giving social media tips, like it's all, it's all connected. Our, our logo for the charity is like an infinity sign. So mm, for yeah. me, it's like giving, but then I get back. Yeah. It's more meaningful for me. Yeah. Um, you know, 
before I started the charity, like when I just had the cars and I, I literally was a douchebag. I wasn't just pretending to be one of them. I was living as a douchebag. Right. I was living in Miami, buying bottles. Like hmm. my last night at this club story, you're a big nightclubber, right? You love story. <laughs> What is that? So it was like a big nightclub in Miami. What is clubbing? Right? What is that? Exactly. <laughs> I used to drink a lot. I can't drink for sh these days, right? Really? I can't drink. Okay. So now I have like one glass of wine. I'm like, hey. Okay. Before I used to like drink like eight shots of Jack Daniels before oh. I went out. That was like my pregame. I was okay. very introverted. I was like scared. It was like liquid. Tim as an introvert. I know, right? You didn't know early on because I would drink. My first time on CNBC, oh. I could barely see the camera. I had taken four tequila shots and I was like... Oh my God. Now I can't drink. Yeah. I don't need any liquid courage. Now you're I, just an extrovert. Yeah. Now I need to like okay. put it back in, right? right. Like shut up sometimes. <laughs> but for me, like I bought this table at Story. Do you guys know Story? Have you been to Story? No. Or Live? Do you know Live? No. Anyway. Well, we're not. Or we're, XS in Vegas? I know you? that. Oh, good. Yeah. That's the one thing right. I know. So yeah. it's like these giant nightclubs. Story okay. was a big club in Miami. Mm. I had like the number one table. I spent like 25 grand. And I'm looking around at like these superficial girls and like friends that I had. Right. And I'm just drinking. And I was like, this is miserable. And then I got the mm. bill and it was like $22,000 for the night. Jesus. I was an idiot, right? Okay. After I've never bought a bottle since that night. Uh, this was. What year was that? <sighs> 11 years ago, 10 oh, years okay. ago, I, I just stopped. Yeah. And I actually walked home. It was like a 60 walk block, 60 block walk to uh, my house at the time. Mm. And I was just sobering up. And I was like, this is the dumbest thing. Yeah. Charity really saved me. It mm. gave me a new life. A purpose too. A purpose. Yeah. hundred percent. Nothing's better than a purpose. Yeah. So that's why I love teaching and trading. But like, I still trade in order to teach. Yeah. But then when I trade, I donate the trading profits to mm. charity. So like when I make a thousand dollars today in the real world, it doesn't mean much in my life. It doesn't mean much in the trading world. It's like laughed at, mm. but in third world countries, that buys a lot. Like it, you can support does, a yeah. family of five. You can feed them for one month for $45. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So you literally, you can feed like 20 families for a month with one trade. Yeah. We have so much excess here that we forget like a lot in a lot of third world countries, how they live and how they have to survive. Exactly. Yeah. And it's excess, not just in terms of money, but like everything. Do you know, like 60% of all clothes produced don't even get worn. They just go into landfills and trash. Yeah. Like, do you know how many gallons of water it takes? Like literally a thousand plus gallons of water to make one pair of jeans. Like oh, I didn't know we're that. destroying the world in so many ways. Yeah. I can make endless documentaries. And you should actually. It yeah. takes time. And though. we'll link but, it in the description. But you have to make meaningful ones. You can't mm. just complain. A lot of people complain like, oh, yeah. the world's going to shit. Like this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Mm. What's fixable? What can we actually do? with education, like just changing your sun, sunscreen lotion with not, without the chemicals, that actually helps. Sharing videos, like using your social media for good. Mm -hmm. Like when I ask people to share like about the rhino horns, it's just getting good information out there. Mm -hmm. Or like if I'm exposing like a penny stock scam, yeah. you know, you're getting good information out there. Good information has legs. It just needs to be like amplified. Let's take a step back. You mentioned earlier that you were in clubs and you were looking around at these friends and they're not really your friends. Yeah. Do you think now having the success that you had over the last 25 years, obviously you made a lot of money. Yeah. Do you think that kind of your friends and family, do you, do you feel like they have trouble relating to you now? 100%. Um, it's tough. I don't want to be like, oh, poor multimillionaire, right? Like, oh, woe is me. No, like, it's okay. People are trying to just, yeah. you know, put food on the table. Yeah. But like, it's a gift and a curse. It's a double-edged sword when you become mm -hmm. a millionaire, especially if you're a public millionaire. So that's yeah. why, like you were saying, like, why don't you have old millionaires? I do. They're just smart enough they don't not want to like public. splash it out. If yeah. I could go back in time, I would do all of this like very differently. Really? You would? 100%. Like, Even though that means you probably wouldn't have as much reach now. I you don't know what you don't know, right? True. Like you don't have like one life to like live and then one life to learn. And you could be like, no, I want to do over. Like I can't go back mm, in time. I but see. I'm just saying if I was starting now, yeah. I wouldn't be so public. Like I don't even share in real time anymore because I have like people who follow me sometimes. Yeah. Like you don't realize the risks, right? Like 
Literally, I was talking about this the other day where I said, this was a few years ago, but I, I said, oh, I'll be in Paris in a few hours. Au revoir. Uh -huh. And I posted it on like, at the time I was posting on Snapchat. I don't post on Snapchat. Oh, okay. But I posted this and I went to sleep and I landed at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. Yeah. And somebody had a sign with my <gasps> name on it. And I was like, oh, it's my hotel. But I was like, wait, I don't remember telling my hotel to pick me up. I don't know. I was like oh, half away. And oh, I'm looking no. at this okay. guy and asking about traffic, like where the hotel is. And he doesn't have the right answers. And I start looking at him. And he's not like driving very well. I was like, wait a minute, who are you? And he just, he followed me. He knew that I was coming to Paris. And I was like, how did you know what flight I was on? I was like, did I accidentally like take a picture of my ticket? Oh, and he's like, no, okay. I didn't know. I was like, but it's like 10 PM. He's like, I know I've been here since eight in the morning. So we just waited holding up a sign with my name on it, Jeez. waiting all day for me. And I, I was like, <sighs> And it just kind of, I mean, he was a nice guy. He just wanted to Okay, like, so he didn't drive you to anywhere sketchy. I wasn't, like, I had seen Taken. Like, I knew. Yeah. What, that was in Paris, <laughs> too. Like, I know what can happen. Um, I, I haven't had anything terrible. But, like, you okay. just don't realize when you're putting content out there, yeah. there's a lot of lonely people. People think that like, you're their friends. Like, you didn't answer my DM. Like, do you know how many DMs I get? Like, I can't even keep up. I, I once messaged you in your DMs. You didn't answer my DM. I'm confronting you right now. I didn't know. Should I'm I sorry. reply my DMs? So check. So you know, you <laughs> know kidding. Deion Sanders. No. You know, you guys know Deion Sanders. He's a big, big football coach. He's like the hottest coach in the world right now. Anyways, okay. like I checked out his Instagram. It's popping. Yeah. And I went to like just DM him, and I was like, Yo, you're amazing. And then he had DM me before uh, seven years ago, and I didn't see it. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> oh my Dion God. Sanders. And how do you go come back from that? I mean, I posted in the story. I was like, okay. Dion, DM me again. But now he's like too big. <laughs> like it's tough with the DMs. They can, yeah. they can slip through. Mm, like okay. the old, one of the best things that I did, and I encourage people to do this. Do you know you have two Facebook inboxes? Yeah. You, you one know is this. like the public page and one is like the Instagram account. But one is for your people who you're connected to. And then if someone's just not connected to you, it goes into your alternate inbox. Oh. You have two inboxes. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know, know this. So one year I was at like uh, Thanksgiving with my family. They're all asking me stock tips. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> this is what happens, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I got to check my emails or whatever. I just wanted to make an excuse. And I had already checked all my emails that day. So I was like, let me check this other inbox. Okay. And I never even checked it. And yeah. two weeks prior, a producer from the Steve Harvey show had DM'd me <laughs> saying, we want you on the oh. show. And I didn't see it. But then okay. I responded. I was like, of course I want to be on the show. Within five days, they set it all up. It was amazing. I was on Steve Harvey. It's like one of my best clips. But thank God I looked at my other inbox. Yeah. That was one of my best, like, like people ask like, oh, how much did you pay to be on Steve Harvey? It's like all scripted. It looks like a freaking infomercial. I didn't pay anything. They just mm. DM me. And fortunately I checked it. Always uh, check your DMs. Okay. That's... All, all your inboxes. <laughs> yeah. I think, okay, okay, I, I will definitely I didn't even know it. you DM me, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's not okay. It's okay. I wish I had known. I'm a big fan of your show. We could have been, we could have met earlier. Oh, uh, it's, it's all good. Yeah, I don't take it personally. I take it personally. This is what I'm saying, right? So like people say, oh, it's just business, but like I'm pissed off that mm. the system didn't alert me or that I get overwhelmed. Like it's right. impossible. Like I was getting like 500, sometimes a thousand DMs per day. Yeah. Like I was really fat a few years ago and I would just sit on like an electric <laughs> bike and just answer DMs and I could get through like five or 600 DMs, but then they would just pile up the next day. Right. So I know earlier you mentioned that at Thanksgiving table, your family were asking for you for like stock, stock tips. tips yeah. I had very similar story, except when I first started trading, everyone called me gambling. Some of my friends who knew and some of my family who knew. So eventually I stopped because I, I just hate, you know, working so hard and having people who don't understand what I'm doing, yeah. telling me I'm gambling and I should stop. So I just stopped sharing. And years later, I became successful trading. I have a YouTube channel. Now everyone's asking me for stock tips. I'm like, what happened? Like yeah. years ago, you said I was gambling. What happened to that? I mean, again, like, people don't know what they don't know. Hmm. So like, they just think like, oh, like you say penny stocks. Yeah. Automatically you think I'm a scammer of some kind mm. or like a teacher. So I'm like penny stocks and a teacher. So I have to be a scammer because I'm like <laughs> in two different industries yeah. with the most scams. And you have two Lamborghinis. And I had and two five cell phones. Exactly. Like it's, <laughs> it's gotta be something crazy. I met Jordan Belford. I did his podcast oh, too, right? okay. And he's the one who created like yeah. the, the pump and dumps. Yeah. And he created like this seminar market. He created basically both uh, my markets. He's okay. like the godfather, even though he was a scam. Um, huh. It was cool. It was cool yeah. in person. But 
you have to understand most people are just going to doubt you until you prove yourself. And then even Mm -hmm. if you prove yourself, they don't understand it. And very few people want to put in the time to actually get to the bottom of it. Like I get so many people wanting to learn these days Mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, here's some basic video lessons. They're like, no, no, no. Just give me a stock tip. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. But they want, they want the easy approach. Just like if you want to like get fit, like what's one exercise I can do in the gym Mm -hmm. just to get fit. No one wants to put in the time and effort. Yeah. Right. So like these days I have many different people on my team and like there's Mm -hmm. a whole interview process to become my student. There's homework. You got to prove yourself. It's quality over quantity Mm -hmm. because everyone wants to be rich. Everyone wants like Lamborghini money, but how many people actually want to put in the time? Mm -hmm. Like there's actually a stat. 90% of people with a gym membership don't go to the gym. I I believe that. If everyone went to the gym with a gym membership, the gyms would be overloaded. They wouldn't Mm -hmm. survive. They count on people not going. Yeah. Like in January, January, okay, maybe people go because it's a New Year's resolution. <laughs> one month, yeah. February, they go a little bit. March, they're not going. They're like, ah. Then, you know, April, not so much. But then summer's coming up. So then April's, the end of April's a little busier. Mm. May's busy. June's busy. Then it's summertime, quiet again. Like it's, it goes in cycles. Mm. If you want to be successful, you can't be like everybody else. You got to put in the time. You got to go through yeah. the ups and the downs. Like Kyle studied his butt off before he became a millionaire. He didn't just And he was it. in college too. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And his family, to their credit, they believed in him. But mm. most of my top students, their families don't believe in them. Yeah. Like Jack Kellogg, like his mom and dad were both like, after one year, he's down like 10 grand. Like just quit, give up. Uh, you know, this okay. isn't for you. But he yeah. kept going because it's not just how much money you make or lose, especially in the beginning which you should be trading small it's Mm -hmm. are you learning patterns are you learning rules yeah can you structure a trade can you control your risk Mm because it's a process you have to optimize your process Mm -hmm. but people don't want to think about that it hurts their brain yeah you know would would you want to partake in something where like most of my millionaire students make nothing in year one very little in year two Mm -hmm. but then year three year four year five yeah are the better years because they've built the foundation of knowledge yeah i lost money for two years what yeah. kept you going? I think I was naive, but at the same time, I really didn't like my job at the time. So for me, it's either make trading work or be stuck at my job for like another 30 years. So I didn't want that. So that's the choice that people have to have. Like, yeah. Do you, are you willing to accept the consequences if you don't succeed at trading? Mm. But if you have a crappy life or a crappy job or you want a better life, yeah. you do what it takes. You keep going. Like if you have just such like a stubborn will, you're like, mm-hmm. I will not fail. Yeah. You might have to try different strategies, different instruments. But like if you want it bad enough after a few years, like yeah. you can do this. I'm not that smart. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not that gifted, mm-hmm. but I always adapt to different markets and I'm yeah. always trying to learn and do better. Yeah. And, and then if, yeah. You're, if you're ready in 2020 and 2021, did you bank in yes. 2020 and 2021? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I hope we get those kind of markets back. I, I hope 10 not. years. I hope, I hope it's, so I say this, everyone wants the I think main, every 10 years you have something crazy like that. Every though. 10 years I'm yeah. good. But everyone wants it like next year. Oh, and I'm no, like, no, 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 no. That's no, a bit no. too much. Yeah. Because we're still kind of, I say it's like a giant party and we're still in like the hangover. <laughs> like we're like, we have like the spins. Yeah. We're trying to sleep it off okay it the mania just can't come back Mm. but people want a mania because that's where the money is but all of my millionaire students started in a slow market and then they were ready for the fast market i agree with that it's almost bad to start in 2020 and 2021 because things were too easy it's not almost bad it's yeah. very bad it's, i was trying to yeah. teach my conservative rules people were like shut up boomer. yeah it's go all in every single stock Atlas because that trading worked. hodl double yeah. or nothing and i'm like you moron <laughs> but but again they're newbies and they made money faster Beginner's luck is not good though. It's actually, so this is what was bad for me back in 99 when I was just like inadvertently tailing these boiler rooms. Hmm. I didn't know. I was like, I'm a genius. I'm like extrapolating. I'm like, okay, if I made 700 grand in four months, then the next four months and I can double position size. I thought I was going to be a billionaire by like year four. I didn't realize like, you know, if you get in with one pattern, like, okay, whether it lasts a few days, weeks or months or years, you're going to need another pattern. You're going to need another yeah. market. And then the big money isn't on any one play or any one pattern. Mm. It's can you stick around for multiple cycles? Yeah. You know, like now everybody who's learning right now, if they're studying and they're paying attention, they'll be ready for the next cycle. Mm-hmm. But I hope that, like you said, once every 10 years, I like that. Yeah. I end the webinars. Like people are like, I want a stock pick now. And I'm uh, like, no, 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 no. I give live webinars. I'm like, 
what can you do now to be prepared for 2027? Hmm. And they're like, how jet lagged are you? It's 2023. <laughs> and I'm like, no, think about four years from now. Yeah. But they don't want to think like that. College mm. is four years. Yeah. You don't think like sophomore year, you're going to get an amazing job after two years of studying. You're already a good point. Yeah. But why do people think that with trading? Yeah. Why yeah. do they think that it's going to be overnight millions? Yeah. That's the problem. It shouldn't be. Yeah, that's the wrong expectation. I think, I think that's also why some people will succeed in trading and so why most won't. Because most people have the wrong expectation. The timeline to make it work is like two months or six months, which is just not enough. Most of the successful traders I know and a lot of your students that made it, they need at least like one, two years and they need that kind of expectation going in. And you also need the losses. Yeah. Everyone wants to avoid big losses, but the big losses are actually the best educators. I can mm. tell people to cut losses quickly. I have yeah. a video of me 30 minutes just saying cut losses quickly. That's all I say. <laughs> yeah. And that's good, but like people don't pay attention until you see the consequences. Hmm. So you need that. Like if there's a giant checklist of lessons that you need to learn yeah. of like what to do and what not to do, Big loss is one of those. Yeah. You actually probably need a few big losses yeah. so that you're so disgusted with yourself that True. you never want that to happen again. Yeah. And then you put in uh, rules and techniques to prevent it. Mm. If you keep going all in, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. If you're a newbie short selling a lot of these squeezes, it's not a question if, it's when are you going to get burned. Yeah. You know? So like you just want to protect against disaster. I know some people where they're successfully short selling for months or years, and then all it takes is one. And mm -hmm. you're like, I've never seen anything like it. Well, because you've never seen anything like it, that's the black swan, but that's what destroys people. Yeah. You know? So we talked about Tim Sykes as a trader, Tim Sykes as an entrepreneur and as a ph philanthropist. But I want to know what's Tim Sykes as just a guy at home. Like what, <laughs> what do you do for fun outside of no, outside of trading, outside of outside of, you know, like charity, outside of traveling, what, what do you do on your down, downtime? Um, I mean, there is no downtime, first of all. Second of all, traveling is my passion. Mm. Like sometimes it's charity. Sometimes it's meeting students. Sometimes yeah. it's like doing interviews. Mm -hmm. um, thank you again for having me on. Thanks for being on. You know, literally flew in this morning. I'm yeah. flying out in a few hours. Like I can just travel like no other. Um, but I, I, I don't know how to sound to say this without sounding like a douchebag. I guess that's just my gift. Um, <laughs> okay. But like it's it's really maximizing our time, like okay. recognizing like I'm working on my presentation. I'm not even done with my presentation. My conference is tomorrow. Oh, no. Okay. And I'm like fine tuning it. And I'm saying like this is the most fascinating time in human history. We don't realize it because uh -huh. people are like, oh, this is going on. This is going on. It's so bad. The world is so bad. The world has always been bad. We just didn't know about it. Hmm. But like we still live in the most amazing time where like we can talk, we can talk online, we can talk in person, we can yeah. share this with people. How do you maximize that? So I'm always thinking like, this is cause I, again, I'm like this philosopher douchebag <laughs> where I'm thinking about philosophy, but yeah. I also have a lot of money so I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Um, sometimes I go on food trips like with Lance and oh, Lucas. Have you okay. had Lucas on the short bear? Not yet, we, we should, should. we on. need to, yeah. He's amazing. He's uh. only like 23 and he's yeah. like, next He's level killing it yeah. but we've gone on some food trips together mm. um really love good food not just for the taste but also like the passion like we're mm. in with like the chefs yeah. with this whole little network called the hungry tourist oh, um okay. we go to all the top restaurants in the world so that's like my downtime but okay. still i'm like hanging out with traders sometimes mm. i bring students i'm doing a food tour actually yeah. in a week with michael good have you had him on he was no. like my first my first online hater. He wrote Tim Sykes Michael is full Good. of BS. Okay. And then he became my first millionaire student. Oh. So if you can turn your haters into millionaires, yeah. you're doing something right. But I love traveling with my students. Um, I was in the Bahamas, which you'll see on social media in like hmm. two months. Okay. Um, with my family. That <laughs> okay. was cool. Um, just maximizing my time mm. and, and really thinking about how do you how do you make the most out of every day, week, mm. month. And when okay. you have financial freedom and you have the world that we're living in, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Like, I don't want to just do basic stuff like, oh, I've taken up knitting. Or yeah. if you like knitting, fantastic. But the mm. world is so, so, so amazing. Yeah. So I encourage people to travel more. So you travel a lot and you do a lot of stuff for charities and for other people. Yeah. What about, have you thought about starting a family? So, I, married, is that something? so I almost got married, um, oh, okay. but I got away from that. I married my job instead. Okay, I see. Actually, there's like a Facebook page out there somewhere where I did like a whole fake wedding with my laptop. Oh. That didn't really work. But um, yeah, I don't, 
they never yeah. saw the ads. I went to the Maldives <laughs> with my laptop and we took like all these wedding photos. Oh, okay. Sometimes I have good ideas, sometimes not so much. Yeah, yeah. The um, Lambo was a good idea. You, At the you. end of the day, it was a good idea. I try. You, yeah. you gotta try stuff. Mm. Um, no, I mean, listen, I, I would love to meet somebody, but it's tough to meet somebody with my schedule and mm. to keep up. Like, I do meet some people um, and, you know, they want me to settle down and I'm like, I'm not settling down. Uh, like okay. also still this, going, but this documentary also yeah. is like taking up my life for like two years. Like, you mm. know, you're in the film industry. Yeah. Like it's my passion project. Mm. And it's like, we have to make the charity projects. We have to like actually literally construct the schools, film the construction of the schools, do the interviews. So it's like, two years like all in while I'm teaching trading and traveling I'm doing like 30 40 countries a year so it's like a busy schedule yeah I'm really busy so it's not like I just have downtime for me yeah you know but this is me I'm doing what I love I don't mm. regret it I can stop traveling if I have to mm. hopefully we don't have world war three which I might have to yeah it'll be great to eventually hopefully see your documentary on Netflix that's the goal you know yeah. we'll, we'll see but even if this one doesn't go on netflix or amazon like i'll just keep trying like mm. that's the beautiful thing like some people again like trading you you try to make your first million very quickly you realize that that's not how it is same thing with documentaries like i learned so much from my first two documentaries and now mm. i'm pouring into the third one so whether this third one hits or the fourth one or maybe it's my seventh one that really hits yeah. i'm gonna keep trying mm. that's what you got to do if you yeah. truly believe in something any f message or advice you want to give to our viewers watching this? Some are traders, some are new traders, some are just watching for the pure entertainment. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give them? Ah, so much. I mean, we've talked a lot uh, today. This has been great. Thank you again. Yeah, that was really um, fun. I think really just treat everything as like a marathon. I, mm -hmm. I have a video coming out. It's actually like going to be like a four hour video. I've been filming it in 20 countries and I just say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Oh my God. Hours. How many, how many uh, videos do we have going on? So at there's once? like, there's like 85 videos that I've put into this one video, but okay. I've been filming it for four hours. I'm actually going to walk around here after we, we finish this okay. and I'll just say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay. And I'll include it in the four hour YouTube video. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But recognizing that it is a marathon, like mm. anything worth doing, you're not necessarily going to have success right away. And if you do have success, be scared. Like if you mm. look at like childhood actors who are stars, they're all messed up. Like when yeah. they become adults or like people. The home alone guy. Yeah, or right. Name, yeah. Or like if you're like a, a sports star and you get all this money too quickly and you yeah. blow it like Allen Iverson. Um, you don't want so much success right away. Mm. It's actually better to struggle. It's better to really build a foundation like with small amounts, like I encourage people to trade small at first. Yeah. If you think you should start with 50,000, start trading with 5,000. Mm. If you think you should start with 5,000, start paper trading. Like you can never start too small, but you need to be willing to build that foundation so that by year two, year three, year five, you know a lot mm. and then you can start to size up and then you can actually really scale. And I want people to do scalable strategies. Like a lot mm. of people are like, yeah, I work hard, I have three jobs, but like all your jobs might be paying you hourly. Yeah. You're, you don't have enough hours in the day to ever really scale up your income. Mm. You might work hard, you might be exhausted when you get home, but you're not really partaking in this new economy where you can scale. Whether, you know, you make YouTube videos and then like I see your subscribers, you're crushing it with mm -hmm. YouTube, Thank right? You. You're crushing it with your video content. You can scale that. It's mm. not like you're just getting two new subscribers every day and yeah. like by the end of the year, you know, you have 700 new subscribers. Mm. It grows. Yeah. That's the exponential economy that we're in. And I want people to partake in that whether it's trading whether it's social media content mm -hmm. but like you can really grow things faster than you think but it takes time and there's like a lot of work that you have to do in the beginning mm. so you just need to get over that hump whether your friends or family support you you know you can do anything like this is this is truly the most fascinating time where you can do this from the comfort of your home you could be anywhere it doesn't matter your background it doesn't matter it's all up to you. Yeah. And it's scary because it's like on your shoulders, but it's awesome if you recognize it and you like get ready for that challenge. Thank you so much, Tim. We're going to put all your documentaries down below as well. Bring it on. Watch the documentaries. We can literally make the world better together. I know it sounds corny, but it's true. We mm -hmm. can all do a little bit. You don't have to do like amazing big things. Yeah. Seven billion people. If we all do like little things, it's amazing what we can do together. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. That was a very fast paced and exciting interview with Tim. Whether you love him or hate him, the guy definitely has a lot of stories to share and we can learn a lot from him. 
If you enjoyed our interview with Tim Sykes, make sure to check out even more conversation with other traders over here. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's, It's a, a marathon, marathon, not a sprint.